I'm Dr. Karan Avedisyan. For more information about me, you can visit my website at beekeepingservices.com. This website is mentioned in the description part as well. For your questions, you can leave them in the comment section. I will return them in my future videos. You can also subscribe my channel to have updated videos daily. Today, I want to talk about chalkwood and its economic impact on beekeeping. So what is chalkwood disease? Chalkwood disease is caused by the fungus Ascosfera apes. The fungus produces spores which are swallowed by honeybee larvae when they are fed by nurse bees. Larvae are most susceptible to infection at 3 to 4 days of age and the infected larvae die within two days of cell capping. Ascosfera apis primarily infects honeybee brood by entering the host through the gut lining. In an infected larva, hypae penetrate the gut wall and mycelium develops inside the body cavity. After a few days, mycelium breaks out of the posterior end of the larva leaving the head unaffected. These ultimately cause the larvae to die. Usually, the spores are spreading rapidly if the temperature is cold, air humidity is high, the bees have been fed with syrup a lot and are short of protein source. Infected hives show a scattered brood pattern with perforated cappings. The larval body dehydrates, creating diagnostic mummies, hard, shrunken, and chalk-like. The fungal mycelium infiltrates the larval tissue and fruiting gives the mummies a white gray color. The cappings of cells containing dead larvae may be chewed away by the honeybees and the mummies removed to the hive entrance, dropped to the bottom board or on the ground outside the hive. Diagnosis in the field is generally based on the presence of chalkwood mummies. Chalkwood disease can be easily spread between hives through the drifting behavior of drones and worker bees as well as the rubbing behavior of worker bees. It can also be transferred between apiaries on contaminated equipment, pollen, and in water. Spores of Ascosfera apis can stay dormant and viable for years, but upon exposure to CO2, the spores become activated resulting in spore swelling and subsequently germ tube formation that extends to form hypae. Presumably, CO2 produced by larva tissue accumulates in the closed hindgut of the larvae, aiding in spore germination. However, additional factors that may be involved in spore germination within the host still remain to be discovered. Beekeepers should replace diseased combs which can act as a reservoir for chalkwood disease spores, as well as cleaning away mummified larvae from the bottom board and around the entrance of the hive. These activities will remove the main source of infection within the hive and assist in preventing reinfection of the disease. Hives should also be placed in well-ventilated, dry area with the sun facing the entrance of the hive to reduce conditions that favor the disease. Lack of population may be a contributing factor in the colony's ability to ventilate properly. Honeybee stocks differ in susceptibility to chalkboard disease so beekeepers should replace the infected colony's queen with one supplied by a reputable breeder. This variation in susceptibility is mainly due to differences in the hygienic ability of the honeybees to uncap and remove diseased brood. By selecting queen bees or obtaining honeybees from hives that show this trait, the effects of chalkwood disease can be reduced. To reduce the spreading of spores, you can remove the brood from the hive and leave the bees only 
by supplying brood and feed from strong colonies. The disease can transfer to the bees through honey, pollen, tools and equipment, especially honey extractor that used for diseased colonies before. It is recommended for backyard beekeepers to put their hives in height of about 12 to 15 inches. Clinical symptoms of these disease may disappear when there is an abundant nectar flow in the nature and the brood is not much in the hives, but in the next spring it again will come up. It is estimated that colonies diseased by chalkwood have about 30 to 40 percent less productivity than healthy colonies. Though some countries, especially in the Commonwealth of Independent States territory, sell some antibiotic based medication for chalkwood and most beekeepers who have the issue by them, However, there is no medication that can fully treat Ascosfera apis so far. In severe cases, 20 to 30 percent of larvae die. If no prophylactic measures are undertaken, then within several years, this number can reach to 60 to 70 percent. To avoid this, all you need to do is to keep bees strong with a young queen Put the hives away from humid places with enough natural honey and pollen inside. If you have diseased beehive, you must keep hygiene rules before going ahead to healthy hives. This especially means changing the gloves, tools, and whatever use that could be potential contaminator. Chalkwood is spread all over the world and cause of many beekeepers warnings who are located in conducive areas for the disease. If you periodically observe chalkwood, you can apply medication named B. Vitam chalkwood twice a year. Spring and autumn time. It is composed of organic amino acids, essential oils and propolis. Statistics shows that Chalkwood is on the second place after Varroa. Thus, keeping eye on it is highly recommended. That's all for today. I hope this information was useful, especially for beginner beekeepers. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to have daily videos on beekeeping. Thanks for watching.